I'd walk down here and take a look at the Hickory King going. He stood here for a while, but it's coming on. Got some top pick peas here. A few. Got one decent row and a partial row. Looks like, oh yeah. Well, starting from about right there. Down through here, you can look at the top of these peas. And, uh, Top seven feet out. So now, if you look real good, right there in the center of the screen, you'll see some deer tracks. And they've laid waste to these peas. See the deer track? Look at that deer track. They just eat them peas up. <laughs> so they like, well they just destroyed these down through here. They eat these from here on out almost into the dirt. They ain't nothing through here hardly. So that's got to be stopped. I'll assure you that it'll show itself through here. And you'll see right here. path they've been coming in and out of. Well, so right there goes to show you that if you think that you can survive and grow stuff, and be 100% sure that it uh, will make it, this height, this rose got eat up. Oh, they're there. But most of these down through here, it's just, they, they've just done been gone. You can see where they've been romping around playing in that grass all rode down, deer. I'm surprised that there's not more tracks here. Of course, some tracks has been here. You can see all the way up through here. Standing here just a nibbling her mouth. Well, I've got news for her. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to trade these peas into about 80 pounds of deer meat. I think that'll be a fair trade. So I'll trade them peas to venison. That seems like a 
a fair trade to me. Now you can see right there where they've ate the whole tops have been nibbled off. And then when they get right here, they stop. And that's pretty good of them. At least they left me a little. Probably all I need. There's one nibbled out. But that venison's gonna taste good. And I'll assure you that that cat's going in the freezer. Let's walk into this corn. See, now this corn, that's about tall as, that's the tip, that's about six foot tall. So we'll walk through here and see what it looks like. We turn down what we find in here. In the corn patch. Yeah, this is coming on. It's got a long way to go. A long way to go before it gets to its potential. I'm thinking tonight might be a good hunting night. Might be a good night to go hunt. I try not to bother stuff. But, uh, when it starts to interfering with my well-being and my livelihood, I jot her down to protein. Now this down in here is a little lower and uh, I don't see no deer tracks in here. Many, anyway. That lower area there, that corn's uh, taller, where it helped a little more moisture. Corn, corn, corn. There's a big pack saddle slap in my arm here. Yeah, this corn jumped after that little rain we got. There's nothing else I can do about it except keep the, try to keep the deer out of me. get on this top end of this patch it's a little higher and you can see this corn's a lot shorter well it's two foot three foot shorter so it's because it's dry stay drier up here this will come on 
we get a little right angle on. Get right around the end, look at that. And then right there. <laughs> Amazing. So I've watched those peas, but I didn't walk them. See, there's your problem. You look down through there, and you think, well, that's a good row of peas. And hit the, uh, they'd eat the peas, come out of the ground down on that low end. And of course the weeds come out and took their place. Just looking, it's deceiving. You think, well, that's a good row of peas. Well, over half of them is eat, eat up. Now, if I can stop it from eating, they'll grow back. But uh, that's the problem. There's two, two critters down here that's got to go. The deer and the groundhog. And both of them's destructive. Both of them's destructive. Okay. Let's walk up here and look at the melon patch. Walk and look at these melons. There's cantaloupe, a few little cantaloupe. The weeds, you should do, they're, they're thriving pretty good in here too. There's one up in the center. They're starting. What they'll make, I don't know. I'd say they'll do okay. They'll probably produce all we need. A little in, a little in there. Yep. A couple over there. A little in down in there. Hmm. Right there. Nothing in there. It'll come out. Weeds, plenty of weeds. Of course, right in the center. I never did chop them out too much. More cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe and weeds. These, they're starting to run. That rain is bringing them on. I'm looking, I don't see a one in there. But they'll come on. They'll come on. Wonder who's gonna win. The cantaloupe or the weeds. See right there, the little things are they'll pull all the energy from your plants. If you allow that to grow, you have to keep them away from them plants. It don't matter if it grows out here in the middle. And I ain't got the time or the energy <coughs> to uh, be out here hoeing this melon patch. Looks to me like quite a bit of poke. <laughs> May turn into a poke patch instead of, instead of a melon patch. A little melon. There's a couple more melons in there. Yeah, they'll be all right. There'll be a few. There'll be enough eat a few, that's all I was worried about. Now these was a lot lighter. I'm gonna have to get in here and pull some weeds. These, this row, I planted plants and some of the plants was weak. It was dry and uh, I thought, well, I'll go ahead and pop a few seeds in, buy, or some kind of or squash or something coming out. I worked around it. I planted those seeds to 
just in case. There's poke duke. Lots of poke coming out. Me and Duke likes a poke. Now these watermelons are taking off. They're starting to run like a watermelon's supposed to. You think a lot of these weeds is, is terrible, as long as you can keep them away from them plants, you won't have much problem. But when they start growing up right around the plants, then it uh, can create a problem. Pulls all the uh, nutrients away from the plant. It don't hurt for out here. Actually, it's pretty good for a, it's gonna be solid for long. Solid. Step over. Try not to step on them. Now right down through here, every one of them's gone. They're all gone. See you get right there. Like I say, it won't hurt for some weeds to be in here. Shade them melons now. now. But yeah, they're running. They're running and the weeds is a girl. I've not looked, but I don't see a watermelon one. Not one, but it takes time. See, now there's a plant, an old poke plant trying to come up in there. We don't need that in there. Anyway, a hairy melon patch. This, this little area right here had never been plowed since I've owned this place. I had a bunch of wood chips and mulch stored in here. And uh, that's one reason I wanted to plow this. But you can expect the first time or two you plow it, you're gonna, you're gonna battle weeds. And the horse is over there. Okay, let's go home. We'll check the melon patch, or the squash patch on the way. Let's get a picture of this right here before we go in. You see all the little uh, little bloom or little pods. I don't think they've bloomed yet. No, that's I don't think they've bloomed. They're fixing to. I don't know. Maybe they have hit simply millions of them. Out of olives. Bunches of autumn olives. <clears throat> a nest up there. Some kind of nest. I don't want it. Is. Be a squirrel. There's another one over there too. Don't know if a squirrel would build in there now. Let me be a squirrel. I've seen them over here. Thousands. Millions. They're good. When they get ripe. Has that been, that ain't been blown. They ain't bloomed yet, I don't think. That's probably the, the pod getting ready to bloom. Well, anyway, let's spin around here and look at the pumpkin patch. The squash patch. It really growed since that rain a couple days ago. Sweet taters. Trying to take off. 
pumpkins starting to run now. They're starting to send runners out. Sweet taters, they're starting to vine just a little bit. They better hurry. If they don't hurry, this uh, butternut squash and stuff will, is going to take them over. Them zucchini over there. One, two, three, four, five or six zucchini plants. You can see that the butternut is running through the fence as I know the wood. I'm trying to eat up and choke my cucumbers out. But that's all right. That's all right. They'll have to learn to coexist, I guess. But you are going to stay away from the sweet taters now. As much as you can, anyway. But you can see as they grow out, they bloom and start dropping little butternuts. You can see that pumpkin hatch starting to run out there. I don't know. Actually, I don't even remember what kind of pumpkins them are. I'd ordered them. See right in there? Let me zoom in on that. Bam. Right there. Butternut. Butternut squash. And I'd say there are several of them in there. Several of them in there. Let's go look at the, my poor chickens. Three hens and a rooster. Thanks to the coons. Let's go look at the little ones. You've got to always have a backup. Rhode Island Reds, and uh, I didn't order many, 16, 16 hens and two roosters, and I guess it's a good thing I ordered them, because a whole colony of coons moved in. They like to clean me out before I figured out what was going on. These will come off. They'll be all right. Roll down on reds. Meat and eggs right there. That, I've not got them to eat. There's a little rooster. Mr. Cone there. That one right there. Stand in the county up by itself there. Rest of them hen. There's another rooster in there somewhere. It's obvious. See this cone right there? I'll guard these a little better. I'll try to do like I should have been doing them others. Just locking them up every night. Oh, I didn't lock them up tonight. They'll be all right, I guess. I didn't lock them up for the last week. The little boogers are wasteful. See the feed on the ground where they scratch it out? That's got to stop. I don't think it's scratching. It take that little head and sling it out. I won't put as much in there. They won't have as much to kick out. Might as well show you this little pear tree. 
This is a moon glow pair ordered from Stark Brothers several years back and planted it. It was simply loaded last year. And it's a looking like it might be in pretty good shape this year too. I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's several pairs, on it. Several. Several pairs. Goji berries looks like they're coming on pretty good. stuff's a growing. I like it when it's a growing. Now I had to top these. I topped these, pinched the buds out of the top right there. You can see they're growing back already. Every one of these I had to pinch. And the reason I done that is so they'd start putting them little figs on. You can see where I pinched the top out of that one right there. And then after I done it, See right there in the middle of the screen, little figs. If you've got fig trees and they're growing, putting them big long limbs out. See there where I pinched that top out? It's starting to bud back already, but in the process, look here. See right in the joint there of them leaves? Starts putting figs. That's what I've learned over the years. You pop them buds out, they'll it'll fork. And uh, it'll also start wanting to put figs out. See here? When I pinch that out, of course, this one's going to fork. It'll fork. That, <laughs> at least it's multiplying. Pinched them all out. Pinched them all out. Every one of them that I could find. Several of them. Anyway. The onion patch. I pulled the onions up the other day. Made a little video on the onions. And uh, cleaned her up a little bit. And the, today I planted uh, basil. That's uh, all of them the same age, but them two there I planted a week or so before I planted the rest of that run. You can see the size difference. Them just come out of the greenhouse. Them went to the garden about a week, week and a half ago. That is citrus basil. And then uh, we've got Greek basil, three plants of Greek basil. And then sweet basil. And that's sweet basil up there. Basil, basil, basil. Basil, basil, basil. Cabbage, cabbage, cabbage. <clears throat> what are you doing down here? You're supposed to be up there. You know, it won't be long. Well, the beans will have to look in there with beans already. Them beans is, well, them beans is 10 inches long. And they're just getting primed cover this up and to start uh, putting beans on. This is cabbage. It still ain't real firm. I'm surprised that it's done anything, to tell you the truth. Them old weeds up there. Might have one to eat in a day or two. Stephanie's dad give us those plants he'd got somewhere. And I stuck them in here. They seem to like it. Vortex. With no strings. See them little veins coming up. Dug a few of these taters. Got them out of the way. Uh, that 
to watch for them old June bugs and Japanese beetles. Look at that. Sneak in and take them a bite. Here, watch it on a... Yeah. Stephanie's strawberries. She's got several strawberries off of this little patch this year. There's a few little ones in there. Them's ever bearing strawberries, by the way. They just keep a bearing. basil right there tastes like lemons citrus basil but it, they already call it lemon basil the lettuce you see is going to fix them to bloom go to seed I let it go to seed let it go to seed start dying down shake the seeds out pull all this lettuce up feed the chickens and you'll have another patch right there in a little matter of time tomatoes is coming on Little Tommy toes. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy toes. Little Tommy toes coming on in there. Yeah. That's called a, a, a garden snack. I'm not doing too good. I've got to get in here and get ready to watch the the peas tonight. We may have back straps tomorrow. <laughs> All right. <laughs>